Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sir Razzle Dazzle Physics. In this video guys, I'm going to be talking about seismic waves calculations. This is a tricky part of the course, so I'm going to spend a lot of time going through it and walking you through a detailed exam question. Right, so first of all guys, if you don't understand what seismic waves are, check out the video in my description. Make sure you watch that video before watching this video here, because we need that knowledge in order to understand what we're doing right now. Okay, right, so we're going to have a quick recap about seismic waves and then we're going to go through an actual problem. Right, so seismic waves, guys, are simply going to be waves created from earthquakes, yes? So over here we have the structure of the earth. Let's say this is the earthquake origin. We know that the waves will travel outwards and can hit the earth's surface over here. The epicenter is going to be the point directly above the earthquake and it's the origin point where it hits the surface over here. Right, there's two types of seismic waves, P waves and S waves. Uh, right now, P waves are called primary waves, it's longitudinal, they're faster, and solids and liquids it can travel through. S waves are transverse, they're slower, and can only travel through solids. This diagram is what we're going to be talking about today. So look, you can see we've got the surface of the Earth here, and the point X here where the earthquake is created. First of all, a P wave comes out, and the S wave comes out, they both travel and hit the surface. Today we're going to be talking about the distance, the distance over here. How can we work out that distance? using the velocity and the time, the time of the P wave and the time of the S wave. So what about the following? Okay, so first of all, the key thing to note is that the distance that the P wave travels from X to the surface is the same as the distance the S wave travels from X to the surface. So let's put that down. So we're going to put down the distance of the P wave is equal to the distance of the S wave. That's the key thing, that's the thing at the start. Right, you also know that to work out the distance, well, we know that velocity is equal to distance over time, yes, or displacement over time. Therefore, if I take the velocity of the P wave times by the time taken for the P wave to reach the surface, it will be equal to the velocity of the S wave times by the time taken for the S wave to reach the surface. There we go. Right, now from here, we know that the S wave will arrive after the P wave. Okay, yes, the S wave will always arrive after the P wave. For example, in this scenario, let's give it a number. Let's just say that the S wave arrives 40 seconds after the P wave. 40 seconds after the P wave. Well, therefore, we can say that the time taken for the S wave is going to be the time taken for the P wave plus 40 seconds over here. Now, guys, we're going to plug it into this formula. Right, let's see what happens. So uh, the velocity of the P wave times by the time of the P wave is equal to the velocity of the S wave times by, open bracket, TP plus 40 over here. Okay, now from here we're just going to multiply out, so VP TP is equal to VS TP uh, plus 40 VS over here. Then we're going to move the TP terms to this side, VP TP minus VS TP is equal to 40 VS over here. Then uh, factorizing this, TP open bracket VP minus VS will be equal to 40 VS over here. Then getting TP by itself, TP will be equal to 40 VS divided by VP minus VS. Okay, so let's work out the time taken uh, for the P wave to hit the surface. Let's do that. Right, we don't know what VS is and VP is, but let's give it to you over here. The velocity of the primary wave is going to be 8500 meters per second. That will be given to you in the question. The velocity of the secondary wave will be 5500 meters per second over here. Don't forget, obviously, the velocity of the P wave is higher than this one because it arrives first. So into our formula, it becomes 40 times by 5500 divided by over here, uh, 8500 minus 5500. Excellent stuff. So now, what is the time taken for the P wave? I'm getting the time taken for the P wave is going to be 73.3 seconds. Make sure you're getting that answer. Right, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, how on earth am I going to take this value and how am I going to get the distance? Well, don't forget, the distance is still the same. The distance of the P wave can be worked out by taking the velocity of the P wave times by the time taken for the P wave, which we have now found over here. So finally, we can then say over here, let's change the color of the pen, so that uh, the distance of the P wave is going to be equal to the velocity of the P wave times by the time taken of the P wave over here. The velocity of the P wave we said was 8500 times by the time taken for the P wave, which we said was going to be 73.3 over here. 
So therefore, the distance, this distance, we can now finally calculate it. It will be the following. 623050 meters. Excellent stuff. Yes, and that's my answer. Right, so I know this is a tricky concept to get your head around. So my advice to you is the following. Whenever you get these types of questions, first of all, the key thing is to write down distance of the P wave and distance of the S wave, and then write this down over here and make sure that you're able to construct an expression of the time taken for the S wave, yes, including the interval, yes. We said that the S wave arrives 40 seconds after the P wave. That's why I said TS is equal to TP plus 40. Once you have these two bits here, the rest is just algebra. Okay, let's try a question using all of this combined together. Okay, here's the question. Calculate the distance to an earthquake if the P waves of speed 8500 meters per second and S wave speed 5500 meters per second are detected at a time interval of 120 seconds apart by a seismometer. Okay, so the first thing to write down is number one. Let's write down over here. So we know the distance of the P wave is equal to the distance of the S wave. So therefore, the velocity of the P wave times by the time of the P wave is equal to the velocity of the S wave times by the time of the S wave here over here. Right, now, what is the interval? 120 seconds. So therefore, we can say that TS is going to be equal to TP plus 120 because it arrives 120 seconds afterwards. 120 seconds afterwards. So let's plug it into here. So therefore, it becomes VP TP is equal to VS, open bracket, TP plus 120 over here. Very good. Then let's multiply and get rid of it. VP TP is equal to VS TP plus 120 VS over here. There we go. Yes. Then grouping the like terms on the same side, VP TP minus VS TP is equal to 120 VS. Right. And then from here, um, just factorizing this, TP open bracket VP minus VS is equal to 120 VS. Very good. Then the time taken of the P wave, TP, is equal to 120 VS divided by VP minus VS over here. Excellent stuff. So therefore, this becomes 120. The VS was how much? Look in the question. 5500. 5500 divided by over here, 8500 minus 5500. Okay, so what's my answer going to be? My answer, guys, the time taken for the P wave is going to be 220 seconds. 220. There we go. That's my answer over here. Right, now, we want to work out the distance. Don't forget, we can use this formula over here. VP times by TP. Um, you could use VS times by TS, but you'd have to work out TS. Yes, work out TS and plug that in there. But we just use this one for now. So the distance of the P wave is going to be VP times by TP. Yes. VP, we said, was 8500 times by TP, which was going to be 220 over here. Times them both together. I'm getting the value of 1871234. There we go. That's going to be my answer. Excellent stuff, guys. So once again, my advice to you is the following. Make sure that you're able to look at this bit over here. The distance that the P wave travels and the distance that the S wave travels is the same make this formula over here, and then get this expression with the time interval of 120 seconds, then the rest is just algebra. And if you're still struggling in the subject, uh, why not comment below and I'll do my best to answer all your queries. And if you're looking for more content in GCSE or A-level physics, and want to explain things at a slower rate, then check out my YouTube channel. I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos to help with your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.